Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to the Child Anxiety FAC podcast. FAC stands for Frequently Asked Questions, and I'm answering your questions about child and teen anxiety. My name is Dawn Friedman, and I've been working with kids and families for more than 30 years as a preschool teacher, family case manager, parent educator, clinical counselor, and now as the owner of Child Anxiety Support, where I help parents of anxious kids help their anxious kids. And this episode's question is, what are some practical steps I can take to encourage my child to tolerate their anxiety? This is from someone who's been listening to the podcast and understands that the goal is not to eliminate anxiety. It is to help our kids tolerate their anxiety. And they said, great, you've got my buy-in, but how do I do that? I'm going to give a very general answer that will work across age groups. The way that you implement this will depend on where your child is developmentally and how the anxiety is showing up. But let's just do this very generally, and hopefully it will help inspire you on how you can support your child who is dealing with anxiety. So the very first step you can take is to educate yourself and your child on anxiety itself. And basically, that's to let them know that anxiety is a normal reaction to new situations or unknown situations, and we all experience anxiety. You can give some examples of a time that you have felt anxiety or nervousness, and I think you can, you could talk about, you know, maybe the first time you drove a car, or uh, you can think about a test you had to take or an interview you were doing for a job. Think about a time when you felt anxious. Your child, no, I felt anxious then. And then you can also talk to them about a time that they felt anxious and overcame it. So maybe that's learning to ride a bike or learning how to swim, uh, meeting new friends, going to a new class. Times when they were nervous and say, that's anxiety. So that's naming that emotion. If you've seen Inside Out 2, you could be talking about anxiety in the context of that movie, or you might have other books, or you could go to the library and ask them for books about kids who have dealt with anxiety. There's a whole slew of them. Mostly, it's to help them understand that anxiety is part of being a person, and we all experience anxiety, and it is normal, and that nothing is wrong with them, that sometimes they feel anxiety. So that's that's education. It's normalizing it. And then the next thing is to help them identify when their anxiety is taking over and talking to them. Sometimes that can help by externalizing anxiety, giving anxiety a name, giving an, giving anxiety a character. Younger kids might like to draw a picture of their anxiety. They have some toys that are like monsters, anxious monsters or something. You could do that. You could get a toy that looks like uh, worried or scared or a little bit scary. I had one child that had one of the characters from Where the Wild Things Are that they used as their anxiety stand-in. And that's to help externalize it so that you can start having a conversation with it. So you, you understand that anxiety is an experience you're having, but it's an experience that you can play with, that you can negotiate with, and that is easier, especially for kids, but sometimes for adults too if we externalize it as a character. So you might ask your child to give their anxiety a name. uh, And maybe that name would be, I don't know, Tom. You could name your anxiety Tom, whatever. And so when your child is feeling anxious, you can say, it sounds like Tom is really loud in your ear. What is Tom saying to you? What is your anxiety saying to you? And then they can tell you, my anxiety is telling me this is going to be a disaster. Everyone's going to laugh at me. I'm going to hurt myself. I'm going to be in a car crash, whatever it is. And then we say, we need to talk back to Tom. Tom is trying to keep us safe by keeping us small, by limiting our life, by saying, don't ride the bike because you might crash the bike, but then you're not going to have the fun of riding the bike. So let's talk back to Tom. And you do this in a really formal, concrete way. You do this when your child is not anxious. So you don't do this when they're on the bike, not the first time. You do this way ahead of time when they're just thinking about the bike because their anxiety won't be as high as when they're actually doing the thing. So you say, 
So tomorrow we're going to practice riding the bike. Are, are you feeling nervous about it? Is Tom getting really loud about this? And then you have a conversation back with Tom. So Tom says, oh, no, you're going to fall on the bike. And you say, well, you know, Tom, I might fall on the bike. And that's where I wear a helmet. Or my mom will be right there to patch me up if I skin my knee. Or my dad is going to spot me at the beginning and make sure that I don't have a really bad fall. Whatever. Just kind of talking back. We're not trying to reassure their child that absolutely nothing bad will happen because bad things will happen. We can't promise. We're just talking about, well, right, we have a plan for that and good things might happen too. So Tom is always going to tell you the bad things that might happen. What good things might happen? You might find out you're the best bike rider ever. You might find out you love riding your bike. You might find out that you can go down that hill on your bike. You might find out that you fall and you get right back up. So we're not trying to eliminate anxiety. That's not possible. We're not trying to promise them that everything will be absolutely 100% fine because that's not possible either. We're trying to get them to have some give, to have some flexibility, to be willing to concede that good things might happen. They don't have to 100% believe it. They just need enough room to get on that bike the first time. So that's educating them about their anxiety, that anxiety is a normal emotion, that most of us have anxiety when we're trying something new, something for the first time, doing something in a new context, and that we can negotiate it. This is not a perfect science. You might do this with your child and they go, yeah, I am here for it. No way, Tom. I'm going to get on my bike tomorrow. And they still might have a meltdown tomorrow. That's okay. We keep working on it. We keep negotiating it. We can model for them by talking back to Tom. An older kid, they would just be able to say that's my anxiety. But even older kids sometimes like naming their anxiety and externalizing it. You can do this in really formal ways, like you can write down a script of things you could say to Tom. Your whole family could kind of brainstorm it of, and, and come up with catchphrases your family uses, like simmer down, Tom, or sit down, Tom, or Tom, enough of your mouth, whatever. Get flippant, get loud, get funny, whatever works for your child and start practicing it. Practice it before, practice it during. Do not expect this to fit overnight. Your child is really working on creating new ways of thinking. And that's hard work. That's hard work. It takes practice. Sometimes when we talk about tolerating anxiety, we talk about calming down. It might be part of what we're working on. It's not the first place I go because tolerating the anxiety means sometimes revving up. It means feeling it. It means not necessarily calming down. It's having the feeling and working through the feeling because it, if we don't fight the feeling, we don't try to push it away, often it will crest and then come down. So our anxiety will get worse and worse. And if we hang in there and we tolerate it, let's say we say to our kid, let's get on the bike and your kid completely melts down. If we can just sit there patiently while they cry about it, often they will eventually get to a place where they're willing to get on the bike. If we try to fix it, try to make them stop crying, try to talk them back into it, try to get them to negotiate with Tom again, we might cement it. But if we can say, it's okay, it's all right, I'll be here, I'm here with you, you go ahead and cry, kick your bike tires if you want to, we're in no rush. Often those kids will eventually be able to come to a place they get on the bike because one of the temperament traits that is often present in anxious kids, not always, but often, is this kind of slow to warm to new experiences. And if we immediately react with, I got to push you to the new experience, we're not giving them that time to warm. If you have a child who tends to process things over time, who tends to hang back and observe before they try the new thing, the kid who gets to the park and watches people on the monkey bars before they're willing to try it themselves, who watches other people put together the toy before they try it themselves, that's a slow to warm kid. And we can just 
build that into our expectations that they will be slower to warm and to come to that new experience. It's not necessarily anxiety. It can be. It can also just be the way that child functions or the way that person functions. If you have a question about child anxiety that you would like me to answer on the podcast, I encourage you to reach out to me at my website, childanxietysupport.com. And if you are concerned about your child's anxiety, I encourage you to go there and take my parenting pitfalls quiz. And that will tell you whether or not your family is stuck in the very, 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 very common parenting pitfalls of child anxiety. You can get to that at childanxietysupport.com slash quiz. I'll see you in a couple of weeks.